All right, great. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm Mike Ranieri. I'm from Dell Technologies. And as Jeff indicated earlier, I'm also the other co-chair of the Redfish Forum. Uh, today, I'll be talking to you about uh, using Redfish tools. So as a kind of a for, uh, front matter, we do have lots of different types of tools, different client-side libraries. But today, I'll be focusing on the client tools. So that way, if you as a user don't know about Redfish, you can still manage the system through Redfish. All right, so we'll first go into why Redfish, uh, and then we'll talk about uh, two particular types of tools. Uh, one is called Redfish Tackle Box, and we have another tool called Redfish Trawler. So why Redfish? Uh, so first and foremost, it was to enable a simple and secure way to manage all types of enterprise systems within your data center. Uh, it's been designed to replace uh, older protocols, namely IPMI, uh, that's been uh, uh, seen as uh, less secure, and try to align uh, manageability with more modern tool chains. So having a JSON encoded RESTful interface, so that way you have uh, much more native support in whatever environment you're working in. So in terms of benefits, scalability, when you look at the data model in Redfish, it's really designed to not just focus on single monolithic servers, but also how do you scale out to manage bladed chassis. How do you manage rack and power, uh, uh, cooling and power rack equ uh, equipment for your racks? In terms of simplicity, uh, because of the alignment around a RESTful, uh, uh, a RESTful interface over J with JSON encoded payloads, you now have a much richer ecosystem of tools available. You can just open up a browser, go to a URI, find a Redfish resource, and you can have a human just look at the payload and understand what the context is and what's going on there. In terms of security, we're not inventing anything new, so we are so we base ourselves around HTTPS and TLS. And as TLS keeps evolving, we will keep uh, pointing uh, uh, folks to you know evolve with the uh, TLS spec. Uh, in terms of interoperability, uh, I know historically with IPMI, you you see cases where you have to write if if vendor is X, do Y. And so with Redfish, we are very much trying to get out of that type of programming uh, mentality. So if we ever see a case of uh, you know, vendor-specific code, uh, you know, albeit there are OEM extensions, so you can still have your special uniqueness there. But as, as far as the standard data model go goes, and as far as standard day-to-day -day operations, we've really tried to uh, you know, keep, keep everything in line so that way you get interoperability across the board. And then lastly, keeping the, the standard uh, future-proof. Th so that way, as new devices come online, new, new standards are uh, incorporated in the data center, so as you know, a new fabric technology com comes out, we can easily add that into the data model and extend Redfish as needed to, to accommodate future technologies. All right, so first we'll talk about Redfish Tackle Box. And so this is a, a starting point for, you know, as a user, I have, a, I have Python installed, I have a CLI available, so Tackle Box is really meant to replace the old IPMI tool type of usage, where you have a command line interface, I want to manage my, my, uh, my systems through, uh, through Redfish. And so it's all Python 3 based. We publish this uh, uh, package to the uh, Python package index. So you don't need to clone anything. If you have Python installed, it comes with pip. You just have to install it with pip install Redfish utility. So that's just the name of the, the, the package we post on PyPy. Now, uh, when you install uh, Redfish Tackle Box, there's a whole bunch of scripts that come for free with it. And so this all, all gets installed in the, uh, the scripts folder, so that way uh, when you're sitting at your CLI, you have this all available to you right at your fingertips. Uh, this is actually not a complete list of everything installed. This continues to grow, but um, I, I would like to at least focus on the more important uh, things that I expect most people to use from, uh, from day one. So discovery. Uh, there's a script, rf discover, this will go off, issue SSDP requests, try to scan your, your network for uh, any, any Redfish enabled devices that support SSDP for discovery, and then it shows you, you know, what systems were discovered. Uh, yeah, there's a common firmware update tool, so uh, rf update that will go off, that will either do a multi-part push update or will do an action to tell a service to download an image remotely. Uh, then you have a whole bunch of Redfish configuration tools, so you have rf accounts, so that lets you show the users available uh, that are currently provisioned on your system. 
Uh, the roles lets you manage your password. So let's say you would need to change a password for a user or you need to add a new user because someone came to your group or someone left your group and you need to remove that, their access. Then you have manager configuration. So that will, that's uh, like setting up your BMC, configuring its IP address, configuring which network protocols are enabled on it. So maybe there's SSH, there's uh, remote KVM, maybe you want to disable IPMI because you're paranoid about security. Uh, so that lets you configure your BMC, set up static IPs, uh, and, and all, all that uh, sort. Then there's uh, RF event service, so that will let you create new event subscriptions, see uh, the current subscribers for who is receiving event notifications, and, and also has options to clean up any old subscriptions that may no, no longer exist. Uh, and then we have also RF licenses and RF certificates. So if you have a license or a certificate that you need to install on the service or a device, there are tools that let you show what, what is currently on the device and uh, also allows you to install those, uh, those new, uh, new assets. Now under systems management, there's another bucket of scripts there. We have RF sys inventory, so that will crawl your, your, your service. It will catalog all the devices it finds and, and prints it out to the user. So you'll go through, find all the computer systems, look at uh, all the processors, memory, drives, all the network adapters, all the PCI devices. So it catalogs everything for the user to see what's installed in their, in their chassis. And you have RF sensor list, which is, uh, it just uh, goes off, scans all the, the power, thermal, and, and uh, other types of metrics that may be uh, accumulated on the, uh, on the system and prints it in a nice table that shows all the, all the current readings, all the thresholds, what's their health. Uh, you have RF logs, so if you need to go look at the event log of a system, find out all the hardware events over time that have been captured by your BMC, that's the tool for that. Then you have RF power reset. If you need to press the power button on your system, that's how you do that. Then you have RF boot override, which will do the one-time boot operation, so if you're doing things like initial provisioning of your system. Uh, you could say, I need to do a one-time pixie boot of, my div of this system over here, and then I need to reset it so it does that pixie boot. Uh, you have your uh, virtual media script. So if you have some ISO image you need to deploy and have that made accessible to a system, this, this goes in through Redfish to point your service to where that image is being hosted and start presenting it uh, to, the, uh, to the host system. And then you have RF BIOS settings, which will go through. It's like sitting at the F2 menu uh, within a, uh, on a console of the system. And if you have to really go into that level of detail and manage bio settings, this, this lets you go do that. And now you also have kind of some of the newer scripts we have with infrastructure management. So if you have a Redfish enabled uh, rack PDU or CDU, uh, there's, there's a couple new tools that will let you go off and query the status of those devices. So I won't go through each of those scripts uh, for examples, but at least showing some of the kind of the simple ones and the common patterns you will see. So looking at RF accounts, uh, you'll see that uh, there's really three arguments that you'll always pretty much provide every uh, uh, script. It's username, password, and the pointer to your, your service. And in this case with RF accounts, no arguments beyond that. Just shows you all the users available on your system. And then uh, the next example here, uh, we have a new argument here, uh, add Bob, Bob's password read only. So this is adding a new user called Bob. And then uh, lastly, we have an example for ch changing the user's password. So uh, RF accounts, uh, root, root, gi uh, give the IP address, and then set password, changing the, the, the password of root to my new password. Then on the boot override side, so very similar. Uh, boot override with just the minimal arguments. It shows you the current uh, status of what the boot override options are. Shows you the available options if you need, if you need to think about configuring it, what type of uh, UEFI mode it's in. And then uh, as an example, if you want to do a one-time pixie boot, uh, adding in dash T pixie and then dash reset says, I'm going to do a one-time boot override to pixie and then uh, automatically reset the system when, once it's successfully applied. Okay, so stepping over to Trawler. So Trawler is a very new tool that's public. Uh, it is a browser client. Uh, it's built on top of Flask to perform management of, of uh, multiple Redfish services. Uh, it, does, it is all Python 3 based, so it requires Python 3 and then Flask on top of that. Right now, we don't have an easy button way to run the tool, so it does require cloning the repo and uh, installing the requirements directly. 
And uh, right now, you have to use Flask directly on the command line to invoke the tool. And then once, once, you, once you're running the tool, you could go open up any browser of your choice and go to your local host on port 5000 to, uh, to bring up the, uh, the user interface. So it, once you do that, this is the example of what you'll see for the main menu. And it's very early on, so not a lot of options just yet. At the top, you'll see your service settings. So there's a, it shows you which system you're currently connected to, has a drop-down menu to pick different systems that are available, uh, has buttons to add and delete services. So if you click Add Service, it, it queries, you know, what's the IP address of the service? What credentials should it be using? What do you want to call it as a quick name? And then on the left, you have the different management pages. So right now, we just have two pages that are stubbed out. We have chassis and user management, and I'll go, go into those on the next few slides. So if you look, uh, click on the chassis link from the main page, uh, this is what you should be presented with. It starts off with a list of all the chassis that are found on the service. So uh, when you're on this page, uh, these are clickable links to drill deeper and to get more information about the available uh, devices. And then we also have some quick info on the side. Maybe you don't care about going to the full details. Maybe you just want to get a quick health status of ever, everything, or you want to go in and just, you know, uh, reset a system pretty quickly. So you have kind of the quick buttons that are useful for day-to-day -day activities. But if you do go in, you get uh, a bit more detail about the system in question. You know, you have your basic chassis status with your FRU information, your make model, part number, serial number. Then you have your fan information. So right now we're just focusing on fans. We haven't added the, uh, the power subsystem yet to show all the power supply info, but it's um, you know, right now focused on thermal. And then we have all your temperature information made available. So when you click on the user management page, this gives you uh, your, your viewpoint for seeing all the users available on the service. Uh, it's broken down to a few different uh, kind of subpages. So we'll scan the account service uh, URI tree and, and build up this view for you. So you get your user accounts. There's also button, buttons to add new user, user accounts. So if you click the, the add new button on the top, It'll let you uh, fill out a form to add a new user, and then underneath that shows you all the all the available users. Then you have your role info. So th this just shows the three standard Redfish roles, but uh, Redfish does allow for optional roles, custom roles. So this shows you uh, all the different types of options available for th for the different roles. And then you have the the kind of the service level property. So if you have a policy on how, how large your passwords need to be, if you need to uh, enable some type of uh, authentication failure me mechanism, you can, uh, you can manage these, these settings from here. So uh, we have our call to action. So try out these tools, they're public. Uh, if you have any bugs, questions, feature requests, file an issue, or better yet, make a pull request. Uh, we review these weekly, we go through these, give feedback, make approvals, um, and if you need links, they're all under GitHub, under uh, DMTF's uh, organizational page. We have Redfish Tacklebox and Redfish Trawler. All right. Well, thank you.